Hey guys, Victoria here from Bumblebeans, the double wedding ring templates. Do you have yours? You should. You can order these at Simplicity, easy quilting, um, handy little tool. Just wanted to give you a quick how do you do this. Um, if you start with a ten and a quarter inch square. So if you say this is your piece of fabric, right? So I've laid down my piece. You have a line on here, which is going to line up with your ten and a quarter inch piece of fabric. And you're going to lay that on there with this little edge and you're going to cut your shape out as I did here so that this will be then your beginning piece on your double wedding ring, the center shape. Um, then I want to show you about how do you put these things together in an arc, okay? So I've cut out my pieces here. I have my little wedges. I have my squares. I have my little melon, right? So. To figure out how to pin these, always find your centers and work from the center out. So I'm taking an arc, I pinched my center, I pinched my center here, take a pin, where's my center, there it is, I'm pinning it exactly on my little fold, if I can see my own prints there, there we go, put a pin in it, go to the end. Always start in the center and then pin your ends. Okay, you line that up. It has a straight little edge there so it shows you exactly where you need to put a pin in it. And then you just ease the rest of this. You can put one or two pins in there, right? And that's going to keep that laying smooth so that when you sew this across you're not going to have any puckers or gathers or anything. So let me just put two more pins in here and then I'll show you once you've sewn it what it's going to look like. I could of course have been doing this in my studio but it's so nice outside. You're not getting me in the house today. So, Alright, so this is what it's going to look like after you've sewn it. Right? The beauty in this is it's a very shallow curve so that when you're finished with it the seam will naturally lay one way or the other. It's best to press it. You can press it open if you want. Um, they'll lay, lay nice and flat, you don't have to clip it or anything, okay? So by pinning that and sewing that, this is what you're getting, okay? On your second piece, you're just going to take your little squares, one goes on this end, one goes on that end, right? Sew that across so you get a piece like this. Then we're going to go back again and find our centers, okay? Put a little crease in there, put another little crease on this one for the center, Okay, start pinning in the middle. The one thing I do when I'm pinning is I will put a pin a quarter inch down right exactly where I'm going to sew across so that I know that's my quarter inch, that's where I need my seam to fall. Keeps everything nice and straight. There's no guessing, right? Same thing, go to your outside, put a pin in it. Okay, now you see that each of these pieces have a seam and we want those to line up. So when you're pinning, you want the pin to come a quarter inch where you're going to sew it straight through the seam. Do you see that? And I'm going to go right through here a quarter inch, straight through that seam. That's how you get your seams to line up. So if you want, if those things are important to you, then you have to put a pin in it. And it saves you from having to rip it out later when you sew across it and it doesn't line up. So just put a pin there, put a pin there, line these up, put your extra pins in here. I'm doing this very quickly because if I talk too long you're all going to hit delete and not listen to me anymore. So now that I've pinned it, I'm going to go back and I'm going to sew a quarter inch all the way around there and call it a day. And then I have the first melon shape complete. So that's it for today. I'll show you the next step uh, tomorrow or sometime later in the week. Bye.